Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Pramila Tebi. I'll be presenting the uh, fluorescein uh, case study. <clears throat> it will be mainly an interactive session. Uh, we will go through some cases and hopefully we can uh, reach the right diagnosis and we learn more about fluorescein. So we'll start with the first case. Uh, this is a 39 year old male. He had sudden drop of vision in the right eye for one week. He has no history of trauma. Uh, is there any volunteer who wants to take this case? Okay, to the right. Do you have the pointer? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you walk us through the floor seat? No, please. Basic crops also. Before, before injecting the fluorescein? This, this is the basic uh, part of the piece of art. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't see what the shield is because of the uh, coral that I've done without visits. Okay, coral what is, else, what else other than this, uh, like hyperfluorescence of the coroid? What else you would say that might indicate that this is a specific specific phase in fluorescein? I can't see uh, the fluorescence of the vessels. Okay. The which vessel? Arterial vessels. Okay, so what, what do you say? Uh, which phase is this? This is the uh, pre-arterial phase. Pre-arterial phase? Okay, so you see that the, the central like, central artery is starting to fill here. You see, it's, it's maybe it's not clear, yeah, it's but yeah, you can take my word. So this is the arterial phase. Uh, do you know how many phases do we have in the fluorescein? Five phases. Can you tell us? Arterial phase, arterial phase. You mean the choroidal flush, the first phase? Yes, pre arterial then... choroidal flush, arterial phase, uh -huh. uh, arterial venous phase, venous phase, and uh, later circulation. So, okay, so uh, well, uh, how can you describe this photo for us? What are the important positives that will uh, that you have to mention or, or you have to tell me uh, about this. So uh, I can appreciate there is abnormal fluorescence, which is high fluorescence in the uh, around the macula and superior leg. Uh -huh. That's great. So uh, this hypofluorescence, what do you think? Is it because of something yeah. specific? Is it like how, how what, what are the reasons of hypofluorescence? So we have two reasons of hypofluorescence. Uh, uh, blockage or either uh, decrease in perfusion. Okay. Do you have any idea what can cause blockage in yes. fluorescence? It can be our pre retinal or intra retinal or subretinal causes. It can be blood, uh -huh. it can be a uh, deposit. Like, it can, uh, like what? Like perfusion, like in this disease or stuff like this. Also, we can have a decrease in hyperpigmentation, RPA, can also give us. Uh, Okay. So, can you tell me what, what, at which level do you think this blockage is? A pre-retinal. Show me where is the pre-retinal. Okay. Do you have any other uh, sites of blockage? Maybe it's not clear. Maybe in the next one because this is the uh, slide is not clearly on the projector. Okay. Continue. So this is arterial phase, uh, and I can see. The blockage, uh, the and subretinal uh, blockage. Okay, can you tell the doctors why you said subretinal blockage? Uh, it is uh, um, the missing uh, blockage, and I can appreciate here the visits in front of them. Okay, so uh, I would argue, I would agree with the idea that the retinal vessels are prominent when you point here, for example. For the doctors, like uh, interns and the attachment, is that you can see the retinal vessels here, starting uh, here the arterial uh, vessels, while here also uh, you don't see the choroidal vessels. So you have both subretinal and subarterial. Okay. How about the choroid? Are you happy about the choroid? It's bad, uh, bad chipping, which is normal at this stage. Okay. And these are what? This is large uh, uh, This is starting. Okay, continue. This is a coral flush. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is coral flush. Uh, which, which phase is this? 
and this is the after you this phase. Uh, I kind of achieve the middle of 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 the can see that the veins starting to have some fluorescence at the walls. Okay, and uh, what are now additive points that you want to mention about this pathology? So, uh, most of the, there is no obvious leakage causing the start of blockage. You mean there is no abnormal hyperfluorescence? No, I'm sorry, normal, normal hyperfluorescence. Okay. So, in first scene, it is a very simple study. You just mentioned whether there is hyper or hypofluorescence. Uh, uh, also, it's, it's it's not wise to like uh, have prejudgment about what are the possible causes of this hypo or hypo, because the fluorescein is a dynamic study. So we have to see the phase in uh, uh, after and before what the picture that you are you are encountered. Okay. How about the drop? Uh, uh, the vein space. Mm -hmm. I can see uh, the vein and the artery have the same feeling, and then we can appreciate the, differentiate the artery and the vein. It's in the both of the crossing. Okay. Uh, okay. Can, can you show the doctors which one is the vein and which one is that? So uh, I go to to this is the crossing, and I uh, follow. Uh, let's go to the upper trunk here. Yes. yes. So I can go to the crossing vessels uh -huh. and uh, starting to follow them and then uh, the So is this artery okay? This is for me here. This is artery. Why? And, uh, it goes with the normal trade of the vessels. Also, it has started to be more hyperfluorescent than the, the other one. Okay. So this is the most important okay. point. So don't be bothered about the size of the vessel. Don't be bothered about the location that you said this is normal trunk. You're actually more concerned about the fluorescence of the vessel. So in this stage, you expect the vein to be more hyperfluorescent than the artery. You agree? Yes. So which one is more hyperfluorescent? Uh, the vein. Okay. So this is a very simple uh, way to to differentiate. Okay. So this is which phase? Uh, phase. Okay. Can you guide us through this uh, image? So, uh, uh, so I'm starting to notice that both the, uh, with uh, artery and vein starting to be hyperfluorescent, and uh, the choroid starting to uh, be hyperfluorescent. Now, I may appreciate any abnormal hyperfluorescence that cause this type of blinking. Abnormal hypo? Hypo or hyperfluorescence uh, can cause this type of blinking. Uh, Instead of looking for any, for example, there is any. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, what are you seeing? Oh, I'm seeing now. There is hyperfluorescence here. Uh -huh. Can uh, manifest uh, the image. Uh, uh, yeah. Can I describe it as a image? Because I need multiple uh, pictures to see if it is increasing in size or not. Okay. So you said leakage. Uh, how can you differentiate leakage and other types of uh, hyperfluorescence? So we have uh, three, uh, four, or more or four types of uh, hyperfluorescence. Okay. Actually, we can have five. We have superfluorescence, which is abnormal uh, from filters or uh, the filtered filters, and we have leakage, which have the increasing in the intensity and increasing in the size, uh, and uh, fuzzy margin. Okay. Throughout the study, since we said that fluorescence is a dynamic. Yes. And uh, how can I differentiate what you said leakage? Yes. What other causes of hyperfluorescence? Uh, uh, pooling, it is uh, mainly it is uh, uh, leakage in the uh, uh, in, in space, not in the tissue, but it has a distinct margin, especially it's kind of under the RPE. It will help increasing in, in intensity. However, it will have the uh, same size. Okay. And also we have a stain. Staining is leakage and on the tissue, staining the tissue. So it's leakage or staining? Don't uh, because you are mixing uh, terms now. Staining. Do you have leakage? No, I mean, uh, when we have staining, it is the fluorescent going to the tissue and stain it. So, okay. Yes. And how can you differentiate it between, uh, sorry, how can you differentiate staining from leakage? 
uh, staining, it will be will have a distinct margin. Uh, it will have the same size because uh, tissue itself it will be any it will not change. For example, like uh, rosin and scars, mm -hmm. it will have the same and with increasing the density and the density. Okay. What are the things that can cause leakage? Macroaneurysms, vascularization also revascularization uh, of like uh, uh, diabetic uh, retinal visits. Okay, only retinal revascularization. No, even see if they see the visits. Or the So this is uh, a, a very important point. So what how, what do you think is the reason of this hyperfluorescence? So we are going through the study. Do you think it's leakage? Can you see this is another uh, picture? This is the other eye. Okay. If I told you that there is like subretinal or fluid here, what would you say this might be? Pocket of fluid. So pulling when does pulling when does it have pulling? Can have uh, under the uh, RPE in the compact uh, uh, space. Okay, so keep this in mind, and we will go through this at uh, OCT, and we'll see if this is correct. Okay, continue. So this is based uh, this information based on the RPE okay. Let's say late Venus. Late Venus. Okay. Which, what do you see abnormal? Any abnormality? So there is unremarkable changes of the vascular shape. In fluorescein, you have to comment on both the vascular shape, the disc itself, also the fovea. Can you tell me why the fovea is blackish? There is uh, the fovea have uh, more pigmented uh, RPE, two lack of results, and three uh, 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 four we have uh, xanthophil xanthophil uh, pigmentation which increase the blockage uh, the uh, the choroidal fluorescence, and it is normally a vascular. So what is your differential diagnosis in such case? What's your diagnosis? So ideally, I need uh, to have uh, uh, on the spot to, to know what is uh, a problem. Uh, most likely, uh, or my differential, my differential, the uh, hemorrhages, pre-retinal. I can see here a hemorrhage. How, how did you, how do you uh, know it's hemorrhage? Uh, and then, uh, the, uh, the change in the, uh, yeah. since, uh, the reflectivity, yeah, so the reflectivity and goes to be high for Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, just keep it simple. Just describe what you see without uh, having any, like, uh, 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 So I can, I can see uh, so RPE. So first of all, what type of study is this? This is OCT. So optical coherence tomography. Okay. And what do you see exactly? Optical tomography with the uh, vertical cut. Is it time domain or spectral domain? Spectral domain. Okay. And uh, uh, is it like a? Uh, do you see that there is a uh, abnormal retina findings or? I can show it in the sub RPE is. Uh, okay. Can you show up the doctors where is the RPE? Is it RPE? How, can, how do you know it's the RPE? I can go with here. I can appreciate the phase here. Okay. And I can appreciate the proximal brain starting to appear because of the RPE detachment. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, in fluorescein, you say this is hyper or hypofluorescence. In OCT, you I also think. say hyper or hyporeflective. So, if you are telling someone uh, this is the RPE, you say this is a hyperreflective layer. 
that as uh, you, can, you can then you can guide them through because uh, uh, it's very important to mention are they hyper effective or hyper effective? So we agree that this is the RP and it's an hi a hyper reflective layer. And what did you find also? Where is the retina? This is the ellipsoid zone. It's hyper reflective layer. Okay. So you have a uh, hyper reflective material under the retina and under the RP. What can be these hyper reflective materials? So you can also think about uh, uh, separate and hyper-effective material, not that in this case, but also like, as you mentioned before, it was in this uh, like uh, 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 regions that include uh, uh, blood. Uh, uh, these are also can be found on the separate and hyper effective material. Okay. Can you describe this photo? This is Calafant's photo of the right eye showing multi layer hemorrhage. So, in the Calafant's photo, you can say is it a white field? Is it uh, like top comfort? Is it true color, pseudo color? Uh, it is white field, pseudo color, Calafant's photo. Excellent. Uh, showing uh, which eye? Right eye, so multi-layer uh, hemorrhages and macular hemorrhages. So before jumping to the positive findings, if I were you, I would say that the median seems to be clear. The disc is within normal limits, no abnormal vasculature uh, findings, and then having a closer look at the macula. So also it's very important to mention the negatives, not just the positive. So uh, as you mentioned, can have. Uh, can you tell us where is the, the hemorrhage that you are with me? So, in the macular area, a little bit of hemorrhages. It's very deformed. Are you sure? Patient is counting the. So the phobia is involved. You can see this tiny pin here. Okay. So where is the sub retinal and where is the sub RV blood? So uh, I can't appreciate here the sub retinal. This is sub RV. Oh, no, no. This is sub uh, to be sub retinal. Okay, so the red blood is sub retinal, and where is the sub RV? Where? Um, I don't totally agree with you because if you go back uh, to the study itself, this study, uh, the sub RPE, uh, this, sorry, the sub retinal will block the hyperfluorescence of the RPE. So all of this black area is sub retinal because you don't see the fluorescence of the RPE. While in this area here, you have some fluorescence that can be related to the RPE. Clear? So, all of this sub RV, all of this light hypofluorescence is sub RV. All of this is sub RV. You agree? Yeah. Otherwise, why do you do have a blockage on the fluorescence? This is the other eye. Uh, this is uh, one field can find the acid can find the spot in the eye. Uh, also, it's nice to mention the machine itself, Optus photo. Clear view of um, the best normal structure. Excellent. That is it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hopefully, flat retina, but also there is something here important that you mentioned. Have you noticed this? It's a peripheral degenerative changes, but otherwise, as you mentioned, unremarked. So, differential diagnosis causes. Okay, what is against structured macronevism?
you think this patient has a ruptured macronutrient? I don't think so, since the patient did that. As no any signs of the pathologies. What do you mean? Later than the ventilator uh, hemorrhages. Fantasies. Yeah, you can simply say because of the fluorescent study, you can see all the retinal vascular channels very clearly. So you don't see any obvious macronutrients. Do you agree? Because you don't see any missing retinal artery that can be uh, hiding a macronutrient. So unlike the two-year macronutrient, what else? So what about macronutrient? Anything else in mind? Differential diagnosis. Excellent. What else? Usually they have the subethnal fluid, not, not mean hemorrhage. Okay, the other differential, the best. Okay, the other one is okay. Diabetic can be to uh, such a bridge. So unlikely in this case, but also differential. CNBN. Okay, when you say CNBN, you have long lists. It can be age rate, neck degeneration, it can be limited to angioid streaks, uh, it can be limited to sickle cell. So it's it's a good term. So it can be CNB, as you mentioned, ruptured macronism. Have you thought about Valsalva? No, this can be also a differential. Sickle cell disease, laser induced. Uh, what makes you think that might be laser? Okay, also if you see in the pattern in the autofluorescence or the, uh, the multimodal imaging, you see streaks of uh, damages around the forehead because of the laser itself. It can be also related to events during surgical procedure, such as what? Uh, perforation. Perforation using local anesthesia can cause such macular damage. Uh, other things also post glaucoma surgery, uh, tube, things like that. Coagulopathy, also differential diagnosis. As mentioned, this is a young patient uh, doing a normal uh, CBC and differential is very important. How can you treat uh, Dr. Arwa, this patient? Huh? Okay. So is it more toxic sub RP or sub retinal? Why? To the, to the what? To the what? So do you want to observe such patients? And what is the time actually limit where you have to intervene? What is the window before permanent damage happens? So if the patient came to you uh, one month of this documented subretinal image, would you expect the damage to happen? So the wound is actually about two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, what are the options of treatment? Okay, and um, this is the first line, or is there like a diagram or like a guideline for you to follow? Or? Okay. Okay. So if the patient has seen V, you would inject ILEA and that's it. Okay, 
So and knowing the underlying cause is very important in the product, but also treating the actual subretinal hemorrhage is important. What are the options of treating subretinal hemorrhage? Tissue plasma, uh, where do you inject it? You mean subretinal or subarbi or intravitreal? Uh, intra okay, so this is an option giving intravitreal injection of TBA, tissue plasmagen activated. Uh, other options include vitrectomy. Okay, vitrectomy with gas tinted, injecting the uh, TBA under the retina itself. Uh, and if you inject TBA intravitreal, you you said this is a young patient. I don't. I'm not an experienced retina surgeon. I don't want to enter the eye. I will try minimal uh, 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 procedure in the clinic. So what are the things that you inject? Only TBA. Okay. What else? If you know that maybe CV or PCV. So PCV also is another differential diagnosis. Very important coronavirus problem. What are the things that might, yeah, so yeah, gas, injecting gas and asking the patient to maintain face down position so the gas bubble will squeeze the uh, subretinal. So this is what we actually did. We injected TPA and we injected uh, a gas bubble. This is, uh, what are the options of gas you have? Okay, and what is the uh, expensile rate of uh, SF6? Yeah, this is the concentration is non expensile concentration is 25. OK, it will double. OK, within. Three days, four days. 24 hours. OK, what are the other option is uh, C3 abate. Yeah, so C3, what is the expensile rate of C3 abate? OK, so what is uh, in general, if I want to inject uh, a gas bubble in normal uh, eye with uh, what is the end size that I, I aim for? 1.2 mm. So if you want to inject SF6, what is the rate, the amount of SF6 that you want to inject? Okay, and if it's CPF8, okay, because it will quadruple and reach in 1.2. So you inject the patient and you ask him to have face down position. And this is the patient, he came to you. Can you describe the photo This is the photo. This is the photo. I can appreciate the view. This is the This is the photo. This is the photo. This is the photo. This is the the photo. This is the on the floor, okay. Yes. Okay. So, do you think this is a good result or um, like mild response or good response? Or... Okay. Okay. So, the blood, uh, just for uh, the doctor, so the blood, if it's outside the phobia, uh, it's not as important if it's under the phobia. So, I don't, I don't bother having blood here, but having blood under the phobia, this will have time in that too. This is after the TPA and the gas injection and uh, the positioning. Uh, this is uh, two weeks after. Uh, uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Ryan. Second case, 27 year old male with sudden drop in vision for three days uh, with uh, complaint of micropsia. Dr. Tihaj, can you help us? So you don't see anything abnormal at this stage. This is at the choroidal flush. And here, which phase is this? Okay. I think this is still Are you sure? Because I think. Uh, Victor Yasser disagree with you. Thank you. 
So do you think this is up to the beginning? This is the thing. Okay. Yeah, this is the Excellent. So this is a lambda uh, at this stage. And did you see abnormal findings in the background, in the retinal vessels, in the in the disc? I see that facial facial patch, facial patches and facial. Okay. So this is which piece? Uh, this is uh, arteriovenous space. Arteriovenous space, okay. And did they say do you find something abnormal? This is the other eye. Yeah, this is the left eye. There is pimple, uh, hypothalamus, temporal, uh, spirit temporal, spirit temporal. How did they? Uh, yeah, it's all. Wait. So, okay. so uh, you mean these? Yeah. Okay. So these are pinpoint hyperfluorescence. Anything else that would work? Okay, and what else do you see abnormal? So, I already think it's a bit of batchy hypothesis. Okay, so uh, there is uh, also leakage. There's hypothesis, uh, time to the Okay, what else? There's also an important uh, finding. There's also the more type of process means to risk. And other than that, it might be subtle, but yeah, worth mentioning. Okay. Do you notice an abnormal fluorescence here? Yes. Yeah. Do you notice abnormal fluorescence in this side? Yes. What do you think is this? So this is normal or this is not? This one is heavy. Yeah. Like, uh, it looks like they're falling in that area. Okay. Good. So, what is your differential diagnosis? This 27-year-old complaining of microbes. This is only with the condition. It's going to be other than. Yeah, he's healthy, uh, not known to have any systemic disease. to make it because of the people just can size to the engine. Okay, pinpoint type of persons. Differential diagnosis. The Michael. Michael? You mean diabetic and related? Do you expect uh, something that's related to be associated with the uh, okay? Um, does the patient have any other Does he have indigenous atopia pain? Uh, not at the moment. He's only complaining for two days. If there is a multiple different type of person who have contacts with uh, some area, so there is a contest that, that looks like an exhibited ID. Okay, differential diagnosis. Uh, it could be possible, any, any type of procedure. Okay, examples. The cage. Excellent. What else? Uh, it could be also. Uh, sympathetic family, that's yes. what uh, uh, from other differential than BKH and sympathetic family. Uh, this is the California water. Anything? Yeah, uh, and we can see that the third is not. Please. Is it clear for the doctors the interns and the judgment? Yes. How about the phobia? Anything abnormal? Okay. 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 So the reflex is not as what you expect. Okay. This is the other eye. Yeah. So it's fluid. Okay. And can you tell the doctors how did you know that this is subretinal fluid? Because this is a two-dimensional photo. You don't have the three D osteoscopic testing. Okay. A principle from this here, there is a large uh -huh. uh, Second, we can see that the, the vessel was curved. 
Okay, so the photo itself will tell you whether the retina is elevated or not based on the vasculature. If you see that the vessel is care, like uh, elevated or curved, then that might indicate that there is something wrong. Okay, can you tell us about this? Uh, so, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, there is a uh, subretinal fluid. It's under the foveal right eye and it's only the left. It's only subretinal fluid. I think this is not subretinal. Do you agree? And this one also is not subretinal. Okay. So what do you call this sign? Also, do you think this is subretinal? No? This is okay. So these are uh, interretinal fluid in the uh, outer retinal layers, along with the subretinal space. These findings are uh, called basilary retinal uh, layer detachment. It's just not simply that uh, uh, because of the outward force to the retina, promoting detachment of the photoreceptor outer segment from the RPE. It usually happens in both in the myoid and the ellipsoid zone. The myoid zone is in the yellow, and the ellipsoid zone is in the uh, pink yellow. Uh, it's a specific finding that might have a specific uh, uh, differential diagnosis. This differential diagnosis includes VKH, as you mentioned. Also, might indicate toxo, posterior sclerosis, CSAR. You can see in all these photos. Uh, also, it can might indicate royal myths or any choroidal lesion. So uh, have you heard about this sign before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's worth looking at, uh, as you mentioned, it has specific uh, differential diagnosis. So when you see that there is a basal detachment, subretinal fluid with some fluid in the outer retinal layers, think about these differential diagnoses. This is after treatment. What do you think the patient uh, underwent for treatment or management? BKH. And I think I think because of the history itself, uh, no history of trauma, young patient, it's also just BKH. Also, you didn't mention the disc itself. Do you think it's a little bit pinkish? Yeah, exactly. So it's the wise VKH. What would you do if the patient comes to you with VKH? First of all, a patient complaining for two days. Do you think the anterior segment would have inflammation? The patient would have the blood test of the Okay, and what do you label this stage? This is the acute initial stage. Acute initial onset VKH. Usually they have uh, posterior involvement with subretinal fluid, typically multiple. What is the treatment plan? The treatment of the patient is a cell of steroid. For the IV, IV we have the dose alarm at the dose. Uh, uh, 500 milligram TID. TID. It's one gram usually, one gram okay. daily. One gram daily, 100 for three to five days. Anything else you want to start the patient from? Uh, and also the patient I would do the IV. Such as? Suspect. Uh, the other name for such uh, and uh, then you follow this. So this patient had this is one week after the treatment. Uh, what do you see on this on the OCT? Do you think this is a good response or yeah, it's fast. There is a Excellent. Research. And you can appreciate the code itself. It's a little bit thick. So this is after treatment. So case study, uh, I think this is a good case because we have uh, a quiz at the end. Dr. Yasser, thank you very much, Dr. Yasser. Can you read this? This is a 42-year-old male with acute uh, lymphocytic leukemia on chemotherapy. He presented with blurry vision and photos for one week. So this is the A of the uh, left eye. This is not like fairly arterial base. Not arterial base. This is, yeah, this is, uh, Lamellar face. Okay. okay. Do you think so, anything abnormal? Yeah, this is abnormal present. There is a leak throughout uh, the present. Okay. What else? Uh, as you mentioned, don't say leak, don't say uh, uh, hyperplasis. Yes. 
So can you show us where the hypothesis? Yeah, so this is a bad sheet, high fluorescence. Okay, and uh, is it in the coroid? That would like to be written because uh, I don't see the uh, written vascular checks. Okay, how many types of hypofluorescence do you see in this stage, in this case? So uh, there is uh, leakage and there is uh, like window uh, defect. Where is the window defect? So. Window. And hypofluorescence where? Hypo, only one area. Okay. Do you think there is difference between, for example, this area? This is hypofluorescence, yes. also, yes. and this is hypofluorescence. Yes. What's the difference between the two? Uh, one of the subretinal. Uh -huh. I, sub I would say this is related to blockage effect, and this is related to non perfusion or uh, capillary dropout. Because if you notice here, to also to other doctors, we have a normal capillary in this uh, site, and while here we don't see any uh, capillaries. So there is capillary dropout in this site compared to this, and we have here blockage effect. And here, here, this is capillary dropout. Capillary dropout. Okay. How about this? Right. Yeah. Just say hyperfluorescence of the vessels. Which vessel you tell me? This like the beams. Excellent. Then you can see that it's also uh, hyperfluorescence from the walls. So what is your differential diagnosis? This is an immunocompromised patient came to you with drop and vision. You see these uh, abnormal uh, fluorescein findings. You see ischemia. You see hemorrhage, sorry, blockage, most likely hemorrhage, and you can see inflammation or vasculitis. What is the differential thing? So, so uh, I would uh, I would think about uh, UPIs, posterior UPIs, vasculitis, such as it's a neurocompromised patient. I would think about uh, CMP. Uh, um, test. C C C CMP. CMP. Yes. CMP. Yes. CMP. Yes. Okay. Why you say ZMB? Does it make a difference? Artery or uh, vein involved? Okay, let's see. We will find out. So this is a differential diagnosis of having vasculitis patients. You can classify in infectious disorders or non-infectious. Also, it's very important to know: is it mainly involving the arteries, mainly involving the veins, or what? Uh, then you have, for example, in this patient. Veins, CMB. Arteries might involve cuterotinal necrosis, toxoplasma, and cascasteries. And non infectious causes, you have multiple sclerosis can involve the veins, sarcoidosis, things like that. <clears throat> so it's an important table. Can you tell us about this? So this is uh, so we have a photo of the uh, right side, so, uh, diffuse retinal hemorrhages and uh, retinal whitening. Uh, so, do you think it's a necrotizing or non necrotizing? Like necrotizing, necrotizing hemorrhagic yeah, yeah. Yes. So, now we'll go to the quiz. Can you uh, scan the barcode, everyone? Don't worry, it's not about the uh, paintings. Once you're ready, you continue. All. Anyone is not ready, raise your hands. Okay, all Victor of the Agile, we wait for you. Okay, ready now? You want to, uh, I can give you internet. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay, this is the first case. Sorry, the first question. Uh, what is the uh, time from the arm when you inject the fluorescein 
till the fluorescein dye reaches the retina, retina artery. How many seconds? So how many seconds do you expect the fluorescein to reach the retina once you inject it into the patient arm? OK, this is the first question. Second question. This is a 29 year old patient from an endemic area, uh, either the eastern or southern region. I'm not sure. Uh, so he came to you with this wide field fluorescein and geography. Attention is immediately drawn to the inferior hypofluorescence of the uh, retina area here. What is the diagnosis? Not the differential diagnosis, the diagnosis of this retinal finding, fluorescein finding. Is the diagnosis of this fluorescein finding? Question number three. This is a white field fluorescein geography of the right eye. Attention is immediately drawn to the uh, temporal periphery where you can see significant area of hypofluorescence with an area of hyperfluorescent uh, at the junction between the vascular and the avascular retina. Give me three differential diagnoses of such finding. Three differential diagnoses of such findings. Okay. Question number four. This is a patient uh, who was camping in the desert. Unfortunately, under had a, uh, a trauma by a camel kick to the left eye, and he presented to you with this fluorescein finding. What is the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? Sorry. I think it's difficult, but I will go through it afterwards. That's very clear. So what is the diagnosis? So this is question number five. This is a 42 year old male, uh, long history of a numbness and tingling of uh, the hands and feet. Uh, he had an episode of drop in vision in both eyes uh, for one month now. He presented to you with this fluorescein study. Your colleague consulted you, sent it through WhatsApp, and he asked you what could be the differential diagnosis. So attention is drawn to the here, the hypoperfusion or the uh, hyperfluorescence of the temporal macula. You can also notice these hyperfluorescence of the vasculation. Three differential diagnoses. Maybe Dr. Yasser is expert in this. Three differential diagnoses. This is a bonus question. This is a 32 year old female, has a state of encephalopathy, branch articulation, and sensory neural hearing loss. What is the diagnosis? One, one diagnosis. Based on this fluorescein study and, and the diet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Can you submit now? So we can go through the uh, slides before uh, the minutes. Did you submit? James asked for the it is no, hang on. Okay. You are a denied examiner. Actually. Yeah. I had a, I had a sack. <laughs> Ready on? Uh, did you submit? Anyone did not submit? Okay, 
Then now, the grammar. Did you submit? Okay. Dr. Debassi, can you uh, tell us about it? We have 10 minutes before we finish off the first question. How long do you think? What are the things? What are the things? What are the What are the things? 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 What you could take uh, one second to tell the uh, say something that's in the art and it's a gun or it's been after the code, it would be one second. But when the expert people start taking photos. From day of you attended the scene and check of your regarding from the type of injection so the diary is the, the retina. Yes, the core about to 15 seconds. This is not the person. Age of growth not different. Would you expect the same for baby the same? No. But if the babies they but it's not. So when you said the uh, uh, arterial time, artery, uh, sorry, arm to retina time, we're talking about the arterial phase. But before the arterial phase, what do we have? Which phase do we have? The arterial, which is the left. The part of the question. So you expect it before 12 seconds, usually 8, eight seconds, 8 to 10, 8 to 11 seconds. So until it reaches the core, and we get the data, we are expecting the state to be the same And all you may expect it after the system. Then, what's the state of the computer? So, once you see the core, you expect it to be in the after one to two second natural okay? And what's in one condition, you will see the some of the right now. Issues will have the same during the time before. What is it? We are expecting no die in the present, except in one condition. Or at least the present situation. Do you have any So you will have the circulation down the corner of the right? So it's the reach the toroid, it will reach the retina and go the What is the next phase? The arterial phase. After that, the arterial venous uh, phase. Okay. After that, the uh, venous. In a space. And do, when do you explain this? The beta space? Yes, usually at the uh, um, 40 seconds. How many? 40, 40, 40. Yes, this is the beta. So when do you say this is the beta? If you reach 40, it's interesting. They like and did you touch some of the basic? Uh, not, not all of them. I think we mentioned about the phases. We mentioned about the, uh, but the time said no. Because to say this is playing huge, let's say you have to get this material. If you wait up to 40, and still there is no feeling because so then this 
So how many seconds after he died again? After he will expect the pain to be in the Anyone? Some they say it's if it exceeds, let's say, 25 from the beginning or like 12 seconds after the other. So you should see something when it be. The veins and the analogies. You should see a complete not the body at the moment. Why lamina? Can anyone explain? You know what's lamina? Please. You say, can you show us the lamina? Yes, fine. So, the next and uh, the plasma's blood from the periphery go so fast, uh, it goes centrally and uh, then uh, the end physics from the end the uh, artery and the base to touch the vaccine, go to the periphery. So let's see that the also So how many, what is the size of the quality of the Is it larger or smaller than the last one? What is that? Okay, how many percentage of the same one? And to what? 80%. Okay. So 8%. Okay. So now uh, albumin will be the same. Okay. So if it's binding up to 80%, and you know, if we're talking about the blood pressure, a human filled will fill the bottom of RPC. So it's very crowded in the center. So if the normalcy attached along with the albumin enter the brain, will start in the side because the center of the human is crowded with blood vessels. Uh, sorry, with the uh, blood cells. Okay. So it will start in the side. Say ma so this is exactly what is happening. So if you take a highway, you will start with this side. And this is before you uh, reach the middle or the left side. The opposite, you have to take the same well, the cell run. So now the proceed studying which part of the retina. That's a part of the eye. That's it. That kind of separation. Why ICG is not the same? Why is it studying? What is the problem? Anyone knows what I was Why ICG is not good? Just to be with me. Okay. So I saw the size of the all of yours, you can ICG to Darja. I think it's the binding ICG is more than 98%. If you want to do both, this is a clinical problem. If you want to do both, ICG and the most of 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 the
fight them. I'm the one decision in time. You want us to go through? Which one you will start with? I see you or first. Notice you will start with close and since it's by a force and open. Yes. Yes, if you ask, you will start by close and since it's by eight percent. Eight percent. Then the I see you. We start by ECG, the, the albumin will be saturated by the ICG. What will happen if you start with the rest of the It will block the red. Can you start anything behind? Yes, it will block the red. So if we start with the rest of the whole picture will be tested. Everything is leaking, then no one is not leaving the red. How many filters can we use like this? Blood filter, the lactation filter, and the LB filter. Show the separation. So the first one is the blue, right? Yes. So what are the. Uh, what blue could we put here? 60 to 90. Okay, and the excitation is? Uh, 500. 500 to 30. So the light will be changed from the red lamp light into blue light, right? To put the excitation, then we need another filter to block everything except the excitement portion, which is? Yeah, the green. Okay, so the green will we'll block everything. And how many minutes is the process and how many minutes is the ICU? How to please start? So, what do you expect for ICU? I, I know we don't have the ICU yet. How to finish the show? What do you expect for? How many patients that can go and see? See, you've got the amount of pricing. Yes, so it's a, if you need very late, so it's up to the patient. I'm not saying that, but it's implied in the law. But I see you. It's a long start with the case of the common Okay, Dr. Yara. 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 Is it working? Matthew, sorry. What? What is the silent call? So, what do you mean by silent call? That Ah, okay. So, do you think that the choroid process here is abnormal? Maybe I disagree with you. Because you know, if you compare the upper half to the lower half, the choroid is the same. But the problem is where the vasculature itself, the retina vasculature. So you see, this is normal fluorescence of the uh, arteries and veins. But how about here? Do you see the vessel here, hypofluorescent? So these are hypofluorescent. Uh, vessels. What is the reason for hypofluorescent vessels at this phase? Yes. Thank you very much. 
If, uh, I, if you remember, I told you that this patient comes from Eastern or Southern region, I forgot. But uh, what makes you different? Differentially, you know, 29 years old from the East or the South? Okay, so do you think this is occlusive vasculitis? I, uh, I don't think so, because do you see any area of vasculitis? No leakage, so it's not a uh, vasculitis. Okay, what can give you arterial occlusion in a young patient uh, with no vasculitis? Uh, such as? More common in our problem. Huh? This is from Eastern region. This is uh, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you don't know how to read the pay, is there any blood disorder common in the East or the South? Any young people? Any hemoglobin body? Yes, thank you. Just with the right side to correct the disease. Okay, so the correct here, fluorescence is okay. Maybe it's unfair for you because it's only one photo. Fluorescence you need to see before and after. But uh, make your uh, like eye goes to more, more striking something, which is black hypofluorescent vessels. What's the reason? It's blockage. Sorry, non-perfusion. Okay. And now let's see what happens. Let's have this. Can you describe this? Let us see what this person I'll put it in this space. I guess it is. Uh, What's the reason for this hyperfluorescent spot? It could be a, a accumulation of the blood. Accumulation of blood. Accumulation of blood. Okay, so, okay. so it's leakage because uh, blood will cause blockage of hypofluorescent. So what is the, back, the reason for the hypofluorescent syndrome? Uh, yeah, what's the reason? Is it a procedure? Yeah. Okay, so it's non perfusion compared with the valve, not a yeah. Okay, what is the reason of hyperfluorescent leakage? What is the pathology? What are these hyperfluorescent? The pathology involves more the blood vessel walls are that one involved. So, what is this clinically? What do you see at that in here? What is the leakage? You know, clinically, if you examine with the vascularization. New vascularization. And what is the reason for this new vascularization? The vascularization to the vascular vascular of the to simple cell. Yeah, I mean, I mean, part of surgery. Why do they form? They form due to the production of the ischemic clock. So now let's talk about the fashion diagnosis. New vascularization due to the electronopathy or signal cell. Do you think the patient has the electronopathy? No, it's in the case of the kidneys. Okay. Other than that, do you see any background electronopathy? Because diabetes usually involves a serial pore more than the periphery. Okay. So this is against diabetic electronopathy. Other differential diagnosis? That's signal cell electronopathy. Excellent. Which stage of sickle cell would you say this patient has? <clears throat> and how many stages do we have? Okay. So, any idea, Victoria? Excellent. So, stage what? Which number? Stage number? What are the stages? No, no, we talk about proliferative sickle cell disease. How many stages? Okay. Victoria, can you add? It has excellent. Sickle cell is very common in our population, so it's very important to know what are the specific staging. So, what is stage one of sickle cell disease? Sickle cell is not proven. Yeah, stage one. 
دكتور رائد ستيج 1 وستيج 7 دكتور ياسر ستيج 1 اوكي So stage one, you have non perfusion, just non perfusion. Okay. Then you have an estimosis, stage two. Stage three, you have revascularization, as we see in this phase. Then you have dimitris, immersion, fraction detachment. Next stages. So I'll keep this in mind. And when we say non perfusion, we're talking about non perfusion findings, such as salmon uh, patch. Other uh, non productive sickle cell findings. Lax and burst. Okay. Device to review. This is very important. So, this patient has uh, oh, 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 oh. trauma by camel kick. Yeah. You had a patient with camel kick, yeah? So you are expert in this field. No, it just starts from the beginning. What type of study, which I. Laser induced thing to be the key. I prefer okay. Okay. Do you think it's important to uh, inform us about the shape of this area? Listen, excellent. So crescent shape in the posterior pole, you see hypofluorescence and hyperfluorescence. Do you see any abnormal findings that you want to mention, whether whether positive or negative? For instance, do you see that there is abnormal retinal vasculature at this age at this stage? So the retinal arteries are okay, the veins. So the retina is not sorry. Yeah, the the yeah, I'm thinking of uh, window technique. Window defect, uh, you mean hyperfluorescent uh, uh, and hypertransmission because the area is not covered by pigment or anything like that. So I disagree with this is not going to be fit. I didn't have it in this uh, presentation here, but I have it on another slide. But I would say that at the beginning, it was dark. At the choroidal phase. What does it represent? Detachment? You mean, uh, what do you mean choroidal detachment? Commotion retina, but we said the normal the retinal vessels are normal, and commotion usually comes in current. What's choroidal detachment? You mean supercoroidal effusion? Do you think? Doesn't. So, if the patient has blunt trauma, what are the ocular things that my patient have? Let's start from the anterior segment. Anger recession, for example, traumatic cataract, dislocated lens. The seven rings, having read the seven rings, long trauma. What are the
So what can happen in the posterior problem? From you said commotion retina, this all can happen. What else? Okay, retinal breaks, retinal detachment. Anything else? Avulsion of the optic. Okay, but he did not. What is this case? Choroid rupture. So the choroid here has ruptured, separated between the two edges, and you can see this is about as a crescent shaped. As and this is also important when I told you that the retinal vessels are normal. So this makes it makes you think something posterior. So this is choroidal rupture. Any treatment in this stage you want to do the patient? Is what do you expect to be a So what's the vision? Do you see the problem? Okay. Okay. Excellent. So you observe. And what do you expect might happen in the future? That you have to follow the patient for? No, no. I mean, what are the things that you want to follow the patient for? You tell the patient this might happen. Excellent. So you put the patient for possible CNV. Yes. Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Yes. Yes. Okay. Image Yes. Okay. Differential diagnosis. Patient has not Why? We have fluorescent session. So, what makes you think this is mother's cause based on the fluorescent study? Multiple sclerosis. We agree with you. What makes you think this is multiple sclerosis? Your hands sometimes. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, excellent. So we have uh, Yes. Periflebitis. And do you notice that it is focal also? Focal periflebitis. Yeah. So what did you do? Uh, what do you want to do to this patient? No, no, this is patient has uveitis, multiple sclerosis, and you made the diagnosis. What, how would you treat this patient? This patient is in front of you. He has a, it's, it's a clear question. Okay. Then both don't ask this question. Just answer the question. Okay. The so, I mean, then the kid has I didn't examine the item. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I will do is refer to a neurologist. Okay. Do you want to examine the other eye? Yes. Okay, this is the other eye, and the patient has new vascular glaucoma. So you want to uh, treat the underlying condition. This is multiple sclerosis, acute uveitic stage, the patient in systemic immunotherapy. You agree? Yes. So this is number one. You want to treat the eye? You want the therapy of aspiration? Yes. Exactly. So, yeah, the patient had in the eye four times. This is, can you describe this after this photo of a patient with multiple sclerosis? I, let me see, of course.
quite a few examples of this project. Uh, but I'm shy. Uh, I can see that there is three pages of three pages. Uh, uh, some ties are like this. Point out. Yeah. And there's uh, the best of the normal. And there's that blood hemorrhage involving uh, the temporal mechanism. Okay, what else? I think we have something also positive in the periphery. Uh, I think there is some snowball in a snowball periphery. Mm, I don't think uh, I can see them. What is this snowballs? I do see snowballs. What are they? What is a snowball? Is it in the retina or in the trees? No, it's in the trees. What is it? I think it could be this area. Do you think this is vasculature? The kind of vasculature? Do you think this might be shaving? Yeah, I okay. Do you think there is other areas that might have also less okay. Thank you. So we have. Uh, what do? You, how do you describe this? This is what. Okay. So vocal peripheral bypass, not arteritis. Okay. So you notice also the the, the the blood hemorrhage and things like that here. Why do you think do you see them here only and you don't see them in the nasal retina? What is specific in this area? It's, uh, it's also vasculitis of one of the veins. Okay. So leading to. So these retinal hemorrhage are they related to multiple sclerosis or related to something else? Such as. Diabetes. Do you think this patient has occlusive vasculitis? Yeah, but in the protein angiogram, there was also a very job of Excellent. So, my, uh, the, other, the question other way if the patient has branch vein occlusion, do you expect to have dot and blood hemorrhage? Branch vein occlusion. Branch vein, branch vein occlusion? Yeah. Yeah, it will have dot blood hemorrhage. Okay. So, in patients with ischemic findings such as this, do you expect to have dot and blood hemorrhage? Yes, excellent. Yeah, so these are signs of ischemia. If you see also diabetic retinopathy patient has PDR, you see extent to think about it. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, the last question, the bonus question. We skip this. Um, what do you think about the bonus question? Patient with inflammatics, pick up, and Anyone knows? Can you raise your hand? Dr. Abo? Just go ahead. Abo, what do you think? So, Sak, what do you see on MRI? What do you see on MRI? So, similar findings to multiple sclerosis, finger like projections of the Okay, thank you very much. Just to address the previous day. Yes, sure. English.